Hey folks, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how Vaadin compares to React and Angular and also touch a little bit on JHipster. When I talk about Vaadin to people, uh, usually the first question I get is how is it different from using React or Angular uh, together with your favorite backend? So in this video, I hope I'm able to show you that using some code as an example and just talking about some of the kind of bigger philosophical uh, differences between them. So let's get started. So on a continuum from React to Angular, where React has very few opinions on how you do things, it provides you with a very minimal API, just essentially enough for you to build a component. But the model it gives you is very flexible, so you're able to compose bigger and bigger applications out of those components. And there's a big ecosystem around React, so you can find a lot of things like routers and state management libraries and all kinds of stuff like that that you can use together with React to essentially build your own framework. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we have Angular, which is very opinionated. It essentially defines its own platform for you to build on. So it comes with everything from dependency injection to uh, testing and component model and custom ways of doing server calls and pretty much everything you do in Angular has a Angular specific way of doing it rather than doing it the kind of quote unquote normal JavaScript way. In Vaadin, we're trying to take kind of a middle road here. So we are more opinionated than React in that we give you a set of tools and libraries that we know work well together. So we ship with a set of UI components, we ship with a router, we ship with form support, and we ship with uh, these typed endpoints that you probably saw in my earlier video. So we give you a kind of a full stack of compatible libraries to work with, but those in themselves are closer to React in that it's mostly just plain TypeScript that you're using and plain Java. So there are very few kind of uh, library or Vaadin specific things you need to learn when you're working with Vaadin. So if we look at what's kind of included, uh, all of them define a way of creating components. They're all reactive declarative. Vaadin and Angular come with a set of UI components. Uh, likewise, Vaadin and Angular come with router and form support but only Vaadin out of these three has a backend, in, in our case, a Spring Boot backend, and a type safe way for you to communicate with that backend. So the big difference, again, here, if we're looking at the big picture, is that Vaadin comes with uh, both what runs in the browser and a way for you to connect to a server, whereas Angular and React are more kind of bring your own in terms of backend or in, in, in the case of React, essentially, you build your own framework as, as you're building the application by choosing which libraries you, you choose to use in your application. Now, we also get a lot of questions about using jhipster because on the surface, it's pretty similar to Vaadin in that you have a Spring Boot backend and then you have a front-end framework. Now, jhipster uh, comes with a lot of different configuration. So you can choose Angular, React, or Vue on the front end. You can choose actually other backends than Spring Boot uh, and a lot of different configurations of, say, your Spring Boot, so how you want to do caching and stuff. So what jhipster doesn't do is it doesn't come with a type safe way of accessing your backend. So you don't have an easy way of sharing your types between your server and your client application. Also, jhipster apps tend to be quite complex. So just running uh, the init uh, app in jhipster will leave you with something around 10,000 lines of code, which can be a little bit overwhelming. So our approach is a little bit different Vaadin because we give you a smaller number of options. We've kind of curated a set of libraries that we know work well together. And by making those choices up front, we're able to kind of simplify things quite a bit, in our opinion. All right, so let's take a look at some code and see how these actually uh, are different when it comes to coding. 
Now here on the left, you can see a botting component using lit element. So we have a class extending from lit element. We've defined a tag name for it using custom element, uh, using the custom element decorator. And we have a render method that returns our template. Now that looks pretty much identical to a class-based React component where you extend from react.component and have a render method. Now these days React apps tend to use uh, functional components uh, which look a little bit different. So you essentially define a function that returns your JSX. Uh, because that's kind of how most people use React these days, I'm going to focus on, on that way of building uh, React components in the next couple of slides. So if we take a look at a slightly larger example here, on the left again, we have a voting component. You can see that we define the component state here up top with property decorators. We have a, a string name. We have a array of to-dos. We have a method for adding a new to-do uh, to the array. Down here, we have our template. So we say hello uh, to the name if that's set. Otherwise, we say world. So you can see that we can use uh, JavaScript, or in this case, TypeScript expressions in our template with dollar sign curly bracket. Then down here, we loop over our list of to-dos, our array, using the map operator. And for each to-do, we return a new HTML template with a list item, and we interpolate the to-do here. We can listen to events by putting a at sign before the event name and binding that to a method. So here we are binding the click uh, event of the button to add to do, to add some uh, to do to this array. Now, if we look at the React version here on the right, you can see that it looks pretty similar in that we start by defining our, our state. In this case, we have a name, we have a, we have to do's here using the use state hook. And then we have a add to do uh, function here that calls set to do's with a new array of uh, to do's. Again, we're able to do kind of inline if else by using brackets, or we can use essentially any, any JavaScript syntax in here uh, inside the curly bracket. So the syntax is pretty much the same here, except in lit, you use the dollar sign before because this is a JavaScript template literal, whereas this is JSX, so you can emit the dollar sign. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. We map over uh, the to-dos with the map operator again, and we return a JSX snippet with the list item for each. To bind to events, we add on in front of the event name and then camel case it. So on click, we bind to add to do like this. So fairly similar uh, in idea. If we had used the component based way of creating components and uh, or sorry, the class based way of creating components in react, these would have looked more or less identical, uh, except for for the state. Then if we take a look at how we access the backend, we'll see some some differences. So in Vaadin, one of the kind of big differences to, to the other frameworks here is that we have a server counterpart that we can communicate with. So by exposing a Java endpoint with the endpoint annotation, and in this case, we're returning a list of to-dos, we on the client side get the type information so we can say that our property here to do's is a array of to do objects. And these are kept in sync by Vaadin automatically. And here I'm hooking in to the lifecycle uh, of lit element. So after the first update, I call get to do's, which is exported uh, by Vaadin. So I'm calling this method essentially, and I'm getting then a list of to do's here. And once I set those, the render will show those. In React, we can use the fetch API. We need to use uh, effect here uh, in order to mutate the state. So again, we have a set uh, use state 
for our to dos. And then we call uh, use effect with an empty array, meaning that this will only get called once when the component gets initialized. In there, we define an asynchronous function get to dos, which uh, fetches a API URL, uh, sets the to dos, and then we call this async function. So we can't, the effect itself can't be an async function, but it can call an async function. So that's as an example how you would call your backend in a React component. So you see the the big convenience here is that we have we can just call the method as it is on our backend and get the same type information uh, in our in our front end application. All right, so let's take a look at Angular. The component definitions now start to look a little bit different. So Again, Vaadin is extending from lit element. We have a render function, and we define the tag name here. Uh, in Angular, typically, what you see is that a component is split into two files. So you have, or three files, depending if you have a CSS file, but you at least have a TS file defining the component class. And then you have a component file, uh, which contains the template. So. Pretty much the same, uh, but a little bit different structure because you have those split into two. Now again, if we take a look at a bigger example here, uh, on the left again, we have Vaadin. So we've defined our properties up here. We have a method for adding to-dos and we have our template here that displays our name if it's set and then our to-dos. In Angular, we define the state in the component class. So we have our name, we have the to-dos, and we have the method here for adding new to-dos. The template is using Angular's own template syntax, so it looks a little bit different from, from lit element and React. So we use double curly brackets for interpolation. We can have some simple JavaScript checking in there, so we can check if the name is set if, or not, and then display a different value. Looping over our array looks different. So instead of using the map operator like we did in React and Vaadin, we use this Angular specific ng4 and loop over the to-dos, setting each one to the to-do variable, and then we can display it there. We listen for events by putting parentheses around the event name and then calling the method uh, that we defined in the component class. So here you can start to see a little bit more of the differences between React and Vaadin using pretty kind of basic JavaScript interpolation for, for templating versus Angular using this custom syntax for, for doing templating. Again, if we take a look at how we would call the backend, how we would interface with our, with our server, in Vaadin we're able to access uh, our Java endpoint in a type safe manner. So when we define an endpoint, Vaadin will automatically generate the to do interface, it will uh, generate this uh, asynchronous get to do uh, TypeScript method that will then call our, our backend in a type safe way. In Angular, the way we call our backend is by first of all, injecting an HTTP client into our component. So this is how we call the backend using this HTTP client. Uh, we can call get and specify that we are expecting an array of to-dos. We need to uh, define our own to-do interface in Angular because it's not shared with the server. And we want to make sure that that stays in sync. So if somebody on the backend team changes the to-do object, they need to remember to give you a heads up that something has changed, otherwise your app might break uh, at some point without you noticing. That returns an RxJS observable, so we can subscribe to that and then set our to-dos here in order for them to get rendered. So again, a little bit different. We're not using the browser uh, native way of calling a server using fetch, but we're using this HTTP client and RxJS. Now this is just a small kind of scratch on the surface of comparing these. So I've also uh, prepared a much more in-depth comparison 
on vaadin.com slash comparison. And at the end of that, you can find the same application implemented in Vaadin, React, Angular. So you can see how they differ kind of in a more real life situation. They're, they're all on GitHub, so you can download them and play around with them on, on your own computer. Okay, so a lot of information in a short amount of time. I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below and I'll, I'll try to answer them there. So thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next video.